So we're going to learn a brand new concept here, a new tag, I should say, and we're going to learn about tables. How do we make tables? So typically a table looks, doesn't look quite like what you see on the screen there. It looks more like this, right? That's a table we're all familiar with. We've seen that kind of a thing before. I'm, I've had this spread out here to help kind of demonstrate what a table looks like in the HTML. So first of all, let's look down here. What is each one of those called? That's a row. Okay. What is that? Column. What's the whole thing? Table. So I've spread it out up here for purposes that will become clear in just a moment. When we want to create a table, what do you suppose the tag is that we use? Table. Table, right? So this is how the code would, it's going to, we're going to put it in the text editor in a minute. Okay. But you open and close your table tags, and in between it, you put all the code that generates a row and a column. So these are called rows. What do you suppose the tag is for that? It's actually called TR, which stands for table row. All right. So for every table row, we want to open it that way. And of course, we close it over here and over here. So this is how we open and close each row. Right? Did, I did that in that last class too. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, man. I'm thinking because the next thing we're going to talk about is a TD tag. Funny. Thank you. Good catch. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. So we open the TR tag, and in between it's going to be the stuff that makes the cells, and then we close the TR tag. The stuff in between that makes the cells, these are called cells, but in the HTML world, we call them TD, which stands for table definition. Okay, so the way that works is we open the TD tag here, and then we close the TD tag here, and then repeat, rinse and repeat, right? So that tag right there is opening that table right there, and it's closing it right that, or that spot right there, and so on down the line. So I'm just going to do a little bit of copy and pasting here. And that is the structure of what a table would look like in your HTML code. Okay, what goes in this actual spot here? Whatever's in your table, right? Whatever your data is, that's what goes in there. Okay, now this is not what it'll look like when you're all done. What it'll look like is this down here. So this will look like this. If I were to write this code exactly like that, this would be the output. Okay, does that make sense? Let's write it. I'm going to open this up. I've left this stuff from our five-minute website today, and I'm going to change my title here to tables. Actually, this is going to be um, Metallica discography. That's what we're going to make a table about, okay? And we want to start off. In fact, I can just copy and paste this. This will probably work just fine. But let's see how it goes. Close. Not bad. I'll clean it up a little bit here. Here's a fun little trick that you're going to want to know if you're using Notepad++. Or uh, Sublime has something similar. Most text editors have a variation of what I'm about to do. But though I know what it is in Notepad++. I know the hotkey. and It's called column edit mode. And the way it works, look where my cursor is blinking on line 15. I'm going to hold the shift and the alt key at the same time and use my up arrow. And I can select multiple lines, and I can type on all those lines at the same time. That's a very handy feature. Okay, um, I'll show you another one in just a few minutes that we're going to use. So I think that's lined up. Let's get rid of this data here. And there we go. That's not bad. Now I'm going to clean up these spaces here. This will be faster than having me retype everything. Okay. But do you see what's happening? Do you see this pattern? Do you recognize this as looks like a valid table structure based on what I showed you in the Excel just a moment ago? We good with that? Okay. All right. So now you ready to see it in the browser? Check it out. I'm gonna. It's on my desktop here. Ready? Bam! Check it out. That is my table in all of its glory. What? Yeah. It's, there's nothing there. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. No, you guys are not going blind. There's nothing there. So, why is there nothing there? Because I don't have any data in my table. So, let's start off here. Uh, one, two, three, four fields. 
we're going to, now some of you are going to know the thing I'm about to do right now. There's a better way to do it. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. So if you know that, just stand by, we'll get there. Okay, but for now, we're gonna do uh, album name. Oh my gosh, I used to know how to type. We're gonna do a year that was released and we're gonna do uh, the number of songs. And that being the case, we're only gonna have three columns here, okay? I'm gonna delete these. Notice once I start typing text in here, what happens? Things start to shift a little bit and it's harder to see it line up so perfectly, right? So it can very easily get very confusing when you're making a table. But here we go. This is the head of our head of our table here. We're gonna put some data in in just a minute. All right. So let's start off with the first album. Kill 'em all. All right, and it is uh, 1984, I think. And probably some of this data will be wrong, but the titles will be correct. And there are eight tunes on there. Okay, the second album, right? The Lightning. Lightning. My air class this morning, we did uh, the Megadeth discography. So you guys get Metallica today. I think that was 1985. And I think it's about eight or ten songs. And let's start and look at it right now. So look how kind of messy looking that it looks, right? I mean, you can sort of see there is some table structure there. But it's, <coughs> it's kind of messy and hard to look at. We'll clean it up in a minute, okay? Next up, Master of Puppets. There we go, Master of Puppets, nice. Next one, uh, Justice, it's and Justice for All, whatever, for all. Okay, and we'll do, I think that was 1989, about 10 songs. Okay, so you can see the data starting to come together, starting to look kind of structured a little bit like a table, right? Do you agree with that? Okay, we'll do one more and then we'll move on. And this one was just, it's known as the Black Album. It's just, a, there's, it's just called Metallica and it's got it's all black artwork. And I think that was 1990 something, whatever. Close enough. I don't know. All right, there we go. So now the problem is though, this is, it's not that nice looking, right? So we can put a border on it, okay? So let's take a look at how to do that. Here's a new attribute for you. The attribute is called border. You put it inside the table tag. And remember the syntax of all attributes is what? Yeah, the, the attribute name equals something in quotes, right? In this case, it's border or border. Border equals something in quotes. What's the something in quotes? The size of the border. And we're going with size one. And I don't know what that is, but I don't think it's pixels because it's too big to be pixels, but we'll see. Okay, but that's, that's a size one. So for example, 10 will look like this, okay? So at the moment here, we have a 10 whatever border. I, again, I don't know if it's pixels or what it's being measured in, but it's 10 whatever, so it doesn't really matter. But that's a big border. You can do like a ginormous border, like 100. Oh. Killer, right? <laughs> okay, but we're gonna stick with one, all right? That's part one. Now, next up, Notice the way this looks here. The, the text is a little squishy. Like, look at Ride the Lightning. It's, like, pretty squishy in there, right? Pretty squishy. We can actually change that a little bit. There's two more attributes we're going to get here. One is called cell spacing. And remember, equals something in quotes. Cell padding. And there's no space there. It's just cell padding is one word. Cell spacing is one word. So cell padding is cell spacing. Here's what those things relate to. Take a look right here. This is one cell. Agreed? This is another cell. That's another cell. The space between them is the cell spacing, right? It's this section right in here. So let me turn off this marker again. And right in here, that little bit of space right there is the space between this cell and this cell. That space in here is, again, so if you want to adjust the cell spacing, you use the cell spacing property, and I want mine to be zero. Thank you. Just testing you. <laughs> right? So cell spacing is zero, and there we go. Now there's no space between the cells. Also note, though, that this, the, the, this is kind of crowded. Well, you can put some padding around the text. That's called cell padding, right? And we'll put like 
Like you can do something huge like 10, which would be too much. And that's, but you see how it makes more space inside of the cell, right? We're gonna do like three, maybe four. Yeah, that was me trying to hit save and I missed the control button. Okay, there we go. So this is not the greatest looking thing in the world, but it's a decent looking table, right? It looks okay, All right? Now remember, what does the browser do? The browser looks at your HTML and it says, oh, you're using like an H1, therefore you shall be big and bold or whatever. This case is saying, oh, you're using the TR and the TD and the table tag and all that, therefore you shall look this way. If I do this in another browser, it may look slightly different, okay? But it, it'll be roughly something like this. Well, there's something that's different about this table, this, this data here. What's, what's one of those rows is not like the other. That's a call, yes, yeah, right here. This is not data, right? But yet I'm calling it TD for table, def table definition or table, table data. It's not data though. What is it? Yeah, it's a header or the heading to the table. So there's actually a, um, a tag for that, TH. So we're gonna change it to TH. This is the thing I mentioned a minute ago that some of you might know that I should be doing this. I just wanted to baby steps, right? And before I refresh it, the browser is just going to look, oh, you used a TH, therefore you shall be bold and centered. That's it. Okay? When we get to CSS um, in a couple, maybe three or four more lectures from now, we'll learn how to make this way better looking. But for now, here's what happens. CSS stands for cascading style sheet. Ignore the cascading part. We'll talk about that later. But style sheet, it's just the browser has a style sheet. And the browser style sheet says this is what THs look like. And the browser style sheet says this is what H1s look like and this is whatever, whatever look like. Well, when we write our own style sheets, we can override any or all or none of that if we want to. Okay, and that's what we're gonna learn later. For now, we have this. Okay, questions about this idea here? Feel okay? Good? That's tables in a nutshell. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Okay? There's a couple other tags I want to show you. Remember the other day we learned about a self-closing tag. Mitchell, do you remember which one the self-closing tag was? It's image. The image tag, correct, right? And it's, it, it has no angle bracket slash, right? And again, we'll just type it this way. Image, that is not a thing. This piece right here is not a thing, okay? Get rid of that. So we have the image tag, that's a self-closing tag, right? We're gonna get rid of it, we don't need it for right now. But there are some other self-closing tags. We're gonna talk about two of them right now. One of them is called HR. And HR stands for horizontal rule. And it does exactly what it sounds like. It puts a horizontal rule on your page. That's all it does. Self-closing tag, it doesn't do anything else, it just puts a line there. And if you go to Canvas, you'll see that I actually use them right there. There's one in, your, in today's lecture notes, there's another one right here. Okay, I use them all the time when setting up these Canvas pages for you guys. It's pretty common. The other one is BR. Now, BR I'm not a fan of, okay, and I don't recommend that you use it, uh, but I will tell you about it because there, every once in a blue moon, there is a good use case for it, okay? So let's start off with uh, a paragraph here. Hello. And here's the next hotkey I want to tell you about. And there is an equivalent of this in all of your text editors. Uh, this is called line duplication. So for Notepad++, it's, I'll show you in a minute, but if you're using something besides Notepad++, Google the phrase line duplication hotkey for Atom, for Sublime, for whatever your text editor is, right? In our case, it's Control D. When I hit Control D, it will duplicate whatever line my cursor is on, like so. Very quick and very handy, useful tool. And you'll see me throughout the semester use this quite a bit. Okay? So I'm going to just have three paragraphs there. So control, D. control D, yep, as in duplicate. So the browser's style sheet says you are a paragraph, therefore, this is how much space you should have between you. Well, if I put a BR, which stands for break, I'm going to put three BRs right there. Watch what happens. 
It makes more breaks, okay? 99.99% of the time, you don't want to do that. You want to use CSS to do stuff like this. Bless you. Okay? But I just want you to be aware of the tag because there are some use cases, and I will use it later in the semester. Okay? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I, I don't still, even in that scenario. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, any questions about those couple tags there? Those are three self-closing tags. There are more, but we'll, we'll talk about them later on. Okay? Feeling okay? Okay. Next up, remember on day one I showed you that little Java book and I showed you that um, the printers would mark them up to determine what's, what it's supposed to look like. You know, you put a little B in the margin means it's supposed to be bold text and a little I in the margin is supposed to be italics. And I showed you that on the screen the other day, right? So back in the day, if I wanted to italicize lightning, I would put I around lightning, right? So I refresh it, and you'll see that lightning is now italicized. If I wanted to bold it, I would put a B around it. And don't use B and I. These are, these are deprecated tags that are going away someday. But that's bold. And then think about when you're in Microsoft Word, the three little icons, right? The B, the I, and the U. You see those all the time in like all kinds of, in Excel, Microsoft, everything. In fact, they're right here. On the home page right there, the B, I, and U right there. Well, those are the same things that we use, used to use, in HTML. Now it's underlined. And if I want to do multiple things, I could do that. I could put B around this as well. Don't forget about your Russian nesting dolls here. Okay, make sure that they're nested properly. But now it's bold and underlined, okay? Now, the world of HTML has changed a little bit. And I'm going to throw out a term that you're going to have to get used to, and it'll come up more and more as we move along. But the term is semantic markup, okay? Let's see if Jeff can spell semantic. Semantic, that's the name of a company. Semant I don't know, markup. I have no idea how to spell it. Semantic, I think that's right. Like when you talk about semantics, that, that word. Okay, close enough. <laughs> this is not a spelling class. Semantic markup. What does that mean? Originally, HTML was meant to mark up the language, like we talked about, to make it lay out a certain way so you could share documents amongst your coworkers and, and your colleagues and so forth. Eventually, very soon uh, after it was invented, JavaScript became a thing like within a year, and PHP became a thing within a year, but it took almost 10 years before CSS became a thing. CSS changed everything. It made it to where you could design and make your web pages amazing. Um, but in order to do that, we had to sort of separate things a little bit in our heads. So we've changed the purpose of HTML a little bit. HTML has one job, and its job is to describe content. That is all it does. It describes content. Now your browser looks at the description of the content and decides how shall I display it. Eventually we're going to determine how to display it with CSS, right? But it describes content. So what does that mean? Well, take a look here. What kind of content is that? It's a paragraph because I described it by putting a P tag around it. HTML describes the content within it. What kind of content is this? It's a table because I described it with a table tag. What kind of content is this? So on and so forth, right? If I had an H1, what kind of content is it? It's a heading. It's a heading one. <coughs> okay, so the whole point of HTML is to describe content. Well, think about this. If I put a B around here, I'm saying that this is bold content. That's not describing content. That's describing the nature of the content, right? Well, in CSS, you can override this. I can change bold to be blue or orange, or I could make the B tag be italics if I wanted to. So if we want it to be a little bit more semantic, instead of putting, say, I here for, it, for describing it as italicized content, I want to say that this is content that's emphasized content. It's emphasized content, right? So what that means is I'm going to put EM here. That's the new tag that we use for HTML5. That means 
This is emphasized text. It's describing the content. It's content that has been that's emphasized. Now, what does emphasized mean? Well, the browser just assumes you mean italicized, okay? But we can control it with our CSS eventually. I can make it bold, I can make it yellow, I can make it whatever, and whatever I do to it, I'm still somehow emphasizing it. So now it's more semantically correct. Does that make sense? Yeah, Jake. So then, if you have different types of emphasis within one web page, is it like EM1? EM2? No, it's all good, very good question. That's, that, in fact, that's a common thing that I did not see anybody do today, but that's a common mistake on the one minute, the five minute web page. This is what I see a lot. Oops, right, multiple, there's no such thing as that, okay? It's, everything's just a paragraph, right? So same thing with emphasis, EM, there's, it's just EM for everything. So in your style sheet, you are able to target a specific EM. So if I want this EM to be bold, and I want this EM down here to be yellow, I can do that. So it comes up almost like a reference list. Uh, wait till we get to CSS to yeah. go into that, yeah, okay? So, um, but you, you'll be able to, in your CSS code, be specific which EMs do what, right? Yeah, well, we will definitely cover that. But they're all EMs, all right. So now, let's get rid of this underlined business here. Same situation is true when it comes to bold. We no longer want to use B, we want to use the word strong. And this is just strong text. That term for the moment, the default of the browser says is you mean bold, right? But again, when I override it and I make it dark blue, that's still strong text. So I've now made my HTML more semantic, more accurately describing the content. Dig it? All right, so no questions. We're going to dive into a new little territory here. But I want to make sure tables make sense, strong emphasis, and the TH, all this stuff makes some sense, the BR, the HR. Okay, how many new tags have we just learned? Right, table, TR, TD, TH, U, uh, U B, and I, we, let's not count those, but EM, strong, right, a whole bunch of tags. HR, BR, lots of them. All right, plus we know H1 through H6, plus we know body, head, title, HTML, doc type, lots of them, it's about 20 or so. Next thing I wanna do is this. We take a look in the modules, Notice what I have here. What is that? They are tags. There is tag. They are tags, but what is their formatting? Uh, bullet, points. bullet points. Yeah, it's a list of bullet points, right? Okay. So let's make some bullet points. Let's go right above these paragraphs here. And there are two types of bullet lists. There's ordered lists, and then there's unordered lists. An ordered list is literally where you number it, one, two, three, four, five. And an unordered list is just bullet points. And there's no, that's like your grocery list is a bullet point list that the order doesn't really matter, unless you're my wife, who puts them in the order of the way they appear in the grocery store from the front door. She can navigate that way. Like she makes my list and it's like, okay, go in, turn right, get this, go turn right. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, but we're just gonna go with an unordered list. So what do you suppose the tag for an unordered list is? UL. UL, right? UL. UL. <coughs> now, in the, inside of that, that's just telling us to block out some space for our bullets. Just like the table tag tells us block out some space for a table. We still have to put the table content in there, right? Well, the content inside the UL are the, the items, the items on your grocery list or whatever. What are the items? They are list items. So the tag is LI. Very good. Okay, so here we go, li, and I'm going to make, um, I don't know, three or four, okay. So let's just put, uh, we'll start up with the original line up here, Lars Ulrich and James Hetfield, these are the members of the band, or the original members. Bonus points, imaginary bonus points, if you know the original guitarist. Dave Mustaine, okay, I'm going to test you really hard with the next one. Who is the original bass player? Most people will say Cliff Burton is not the original bass player. So another Dave, Dave McGovney, I believe is the name. I don't know how to spell it, but we'll go with that. Okay, that's the original lineup. 
Little side note. You, you guys know Metallica's nickname? Back in the day, it was Alcoholica. Right? They had a reputation for drinking. Okay? That was their nickname. Why do I tell you that? Because Dave Mustaine got kicked out of the band because he drank too much. What kind of a drinking problem do you have if a band called Alcoholica kicks you out of the band? That's a serious drinking problem. I think he was doing drugs too, but man, so they kicked him out of the band. So he was never even on any of their albums. Anyway, let's start here, okay? What did you guys learn today? Metal. So now we have a nice bullet point of the list of the band members, right, of the original lineup, okay? Well, I want to number them, though. I want it to be one, two, three, four, five, right? Well, all I have to do is change this from unordered to ordered. And behold, I now have an ordered list. Yeah? So if you wanted the ordered list to display Roman numerals or letters, that would be a CSS thing? Well, if I wanted to, his question was, if I wanted to change this to be like ABC or... Roman numerals or something like that, there is an attribute called type, and it goes inside the OL tag, type equals something in quotes, and the something in quotes, if I want it to be capital letters, is a capital A, and now I get ABCD, okay? If I want lowercase letters, I do lowercase A. If I want Roman numerals, what would you guess I would type? I. An I, right? So that's capital Roman numerals. And lowercase Roman numerals, lowercase i, and behold, there we go. Okay? Very cool. Let's go back to uh, the default, which is just, I put the number one there. That's the default that you're going to get, right? But let's change it, because I know there's another question that's brewing in some of your minds. Next up, and we'll get to it, I promise. The next one we're going to do is the new lineup. Pretty early on in the band's history. Dave Mustaine was out, and Kirk Hammett came in. And then Dave McGovney was out pretty quickly. In fact, he was out even before they recorded as well, and Cliff Burton came in. Cliff Burton tragically died in a bus accident when he was like about 20 years old, their tour bus. They hit some ice or something, and the bus literally rolled over and crushed him to death. It's horrible. Uh, that was after the third album. He was, he was gone after the third album. So sorry to bring it down, guys. Okay, so uh, here we go. We've added a few more guys. We're going to add a couple more. I have a point, I promise. When Cliff died, Jason Newstead took over. And he was on about four or five albums. And there came a point where, sadly, the band did not do well with Cliff's death. They were close, and uh, when Jason came in to replace him, they were not very nice to him. They kind of hazed him a lot. And there was a lot of friction between them, and they kind of ruined their relationship. So Jason left the band and was replaced with the current guy, Robert Trujillo. All right, why am I telling you all this? A, I want to educate you about metal. B, I want to show you a little thing that you can do in HTML. I, have the, I want to have the original lineup on top, and then I want to have some of the new guys down below. Okay? So I want to have... Down below the table, the bottom half of the list, and above the table, the top half of the list. See what I'm doing there? Okay. So I have an ordered list here, and I have an ordered list here. <coughs> Overall, it is the complete list of all eight members that have ever been in Metallica, as far as I know. Okay. Now when I refresh it, look what we have here. I have one, two, three, four, and then I have one, two, three, four again. Me no likey. I want one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, right? That's what I want. So you can do that. Right here, there's a uh, an attribute called start equals something in quotes, and the number is five. There you go. All right. Uh, overall, big picture, I, I know this. I've crammed a lot of stuff into your face here, okay? Um, how do you feel about it overall? Is there anything that's sort of fuzzy that you feel like, man, we need to look at this one more time? No? Okay, next thing, I'm just going to ask you a question. What makes you a good HTML programmer? I asked this the other day, I think. And I gave the answer the other day. Jake? 
Knowing the syntax of a lot of code? No, close. Knowing the ta what, ta what the tags are, right? And you do have to know the syntax, of course, too, yeah. So knowing what the tags are. Um, remind me to come back to the word syntax in just a minute. That's an important word. Um, but knowing what the tags are. Now, I've given you about 20 of them already, right? We've already learned about 20 tags. We've already been exposed to 20 tags. And I've already shown you the resource for the rest of the tags, w3schools.com slash tags. They're all here, okay? Take a minute to learn these and get familiar with them at least. And there'll be times where I'm gonna send you to there and have you explore and come up with a tag to use that I haven't taught you about. Okay, there will be times I'll do that. But the other part of making you a good HTML programmer, you also have to know the attributes, right? And I mean, I've just spouted off a bunch of them that I have memorized that I wouldn't even say memorized, I just have them remembered because I've used them so frequently. But start, border, cell spacing, cell padding, we've talked about href and source, and a few others, right? Those are all attributes. You gotta learn those too. Now, there are, however many tags there are, there are that many tags times 20 or 30 number of attributes. Some attributes are in all tags, okay? You can use the style attribute in all tags. You can use the class attribute and the ID attribute in all tags. Um, but there are some that are only specific to the tags, okay? So you gotta get familiar with those. How do you do that? W3schools.com slash tags, click on the tags and look at the written uh, attributes. So I just wanna throw that out there as a little seed to get you used to that. Even as a developer now, every now and then I'll run to something that I wanna do and I'm like, man, I don't know if I've ever done that before in HTML. I better go Google something. I usually head to W3schools, okay? It's a good resource. All right, syntax. Um, Syntax is a very specific term that you need to understand because you have questions about this on your homework. And if you're not clear what that word means, it will, um, you'll get the wrong answer on your homework, okay? Syntax is a word we know, right? So if you speak um, English, we say something like, um, I have a red car, right? Red car. If you speak Spanish, you say, Tango Caro Rojo, which means literally translated, I have car red, right? The verb and the, or the adjective and the noun are backwards. That's a syntax thing. That's a, that's a, the, the syntax is different. Syntax is the structure of a language, right? In English, the adjective goes before the noun. In Spanish, it goes after the noun, okay? Okay, so how is this, how is this a syntax thing? How does this apply to our programming? Well, that's a syntax problem, right? I didn't close, I didn't structure it properly. That's a syntax problem. I mean, I did, I'm not closing on line 13. Let me scroll up a little bit there, okay? That's a syntax problem. Um, how about uh, that? That's a huge syntax problem because you have something outside of the head or the body tag, right? Those kinds of things are syntax problems. Um, what if, like for example, that, <laughs> spelled his name wrong. That is not a syntax problem. That's just a typo. I just spelled his name wrong, okay? That's what I call him. What's up, Jam? <laughs> We're buddies. <laughs> All right, so that's not a syntax problem. What if, um, what if I wanted you to make this italics, uh, sorry, if I wanted you to make it bold, but you did this. You italicized it. That is not a syntax problem. It's just a mistake. It's a logic error, right? That's a logic error. My logic is meant to be <coughs> struck uh, uh, bold, but I screwed up, okay? So that's not a mistake. That's not a syntax error. It's just a, a mistake, okay? So as a, when we get into JavaScript later on down the line and in CSS, this becomes more important but you have to distinguish between logic errors and syntax errors. Logic errors, the program will, will run just fine, except you'll get incorrect results or something like that. Whereas if you have a syntax error, the program may not run at all, okay? Now the thing that's kooky about this, let's see what happens when I do this. Yeah, we get an extra bullet point there. Here's what's happening in Chrome when I do that. Chrome, just assumes I meant to close this. And so it sort of secretly puts one in there. 
not really, but it kind of just assumes that's what you meant. And so now this new one is the start of a new bullet point. Okay? Other browsers will handle that differently. Okay? Everything, everyone's different. So I'm glad you mentioned that word, syntax, because that's an important thing, and I got it on film here so we can remember that. Okay, other questions?